go. Joining us now, the lead draft analyst from ProFootballFocus.com. This guy has all the deets. He has a wealth of information about the sport. And the four of us will never, ever forgive Becca for sending him home. He is our guy. Never. Here for the right reasons, Mike Renner. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back. Of course, of course, Mike, let's get into it. We just showed the Texans. They won last night. Five games left in the season. Does that make the Houston Texans the favorites in the AFC South? What say you? Yeah, I think they're definitely the favorite. Uh, two big reasons why. One, Deshaun Watson. He is the best quarterback in the AFC South. That, that position just dictates the success for a lot of football teams. And two, and I can't believe I'm even saying this, they have a top five graded pass protecting offensive line at the moment. Right tackle, uh, Titus Howard, the rookie, deserves a little more love. He is playing fantastic football right now, doing the job in pass protecting. And obviously Laramie Tunsil on the left side has been a huge upgrade for them. So that offensive line, one of the worst in the NFL for Deshaun Watson's first couple years, all of a sudden one of the best now. I think that's the reason why they're the favorite. All right, now, Mike, Lamar Jackson has taken the league by storm. He obviously passes the eye test. We all know that. Incredible highlights every single week. Do the metrics that you guys use at Pro Football Focus support that you can have that type of performance week in and week out, and it's sustainable? Mm. Yeah, everyone wants to question the sustainability of a running quarterback, and I think the only thing that's not necessarily sustainable is injury. He could get injured. That obviously he's taking more hits than most quarterbacks, but when he's on the football field, when he's a dynamic runner, we've seen for a decade now that offenses run like that are sustainable. His offensive coordinator, Greg Roman, all the way dating back to his years in San Francisco and then in Buffalo with Tyrod Taylor, Colin Kaepernick, Alex Smith has only had one offense with a below average points per drive. He has had all above average offenses with a similar offense that they're running there in Baltimore and now they have the number one offense in the NFL. Those quarterbacks, Tyrod Taylor, Colin Kaepernick, Alex Smith, are not nearly as dynamic as Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, second highest graded quarterback in the NFL, second highest graded second year quarterback we've ever seen in our grading system in, going back to 2006. So the sustainability of it, I think it's crazy. He is sustainable. That offense has a very high floor with how dynamic he is as a rushing threat and how they use his legs. And that includes Russell Wilson, who in his second year went on to win a Super Bowl. So, Mike, that is some high praise you're saying. Look, I think we have something on the show, and you're a draft analyst. We call it draft bias. It's like if a guy goes undrafted, we don't really buy in yet. Or if a guy goes late rounds, we don't buy in. Dak Prescott's been in the league for many years, but to some, he's still a fourth-round pick. What do you think of Dak's amazing emergence the last few weeks? And are you ready to call him one of the game's best signal callers? Yeah, I think I'm very ready to call him one of the best signal callers. A top 10 graded quarterback yet again this season has been, you know, one of the top 15 every single year of his career. And I think he's finally in a modern offense with modern weapons on the outside that can actually get open and beat man coverage. Mark Cooper has been a cheat code in terms of how uh, he has sauced opposing cornerbacks this season. Jair Alexander gave him over 200 yards. He has opened every single play if they want. And Dak Prescott, his accuracy underneath in the intermediate range, basically where the game's being won at the the NFL level nowadays is as good as it gets. Still struggles with some deep balls, still floats some, but I think we can forgive that. I think we're seeing what he could look like, like I said, in a modern offense. They're doing a lot of different things this year under Kellen Moore that have you know, made them more like the Chiefs, more like some of the better offenses in the NFL in terms of using play action, bunch sets, pre-snap motion, uh, and I think we're seeing the results for Dak Prescott. We will record this and replay it once they get done with their matchup against the New England Patriots in Foxborough and see if it sticks. It's going to be a tough one, but I want to talk about their opponent and Tom Brady this week. He looks frustrated. He voiced some frustrations on the radio this week on WEEI on a, a weekly hit that he does. He seems to be grumpy about the offense and how it's performing. Is there a legit reason that Patriot fans should be concerned? I think there is, and it starts with their offensive line. I think Isaiah Wynn, yes, he's coming back here, but with Marshall Newhouse at left tackle, and the one that hasn't really been talked about, everyone's talked talk about, you know, Gronk not being there uh, and Isaiah Wynn not being there, but David Andrews not being there at center has been a huge, huge loss for them. Ted Karras, one of the lowest five-graded centers in the NFL right now per our grading here at PFF. That is just such a massive drop-off at such a key position along the offensive line. They're the signal caller. They're the ones that have to make those reads. Ted Karras is not getting the job done. And that quick pressure up the middle in Brady's face, that's been sort of the blueprint for beating him over the course of his career. I don't think that's going away anytime soon. So, yes, I think there is reason to worry about this Patriots offense. No devil in two, that hurts.
Absolutely, and we will all be watching that one. The Cowboys, of course, and that one on a quest for respect or a journey to find love. Mike Renner, you are the best. You nail it every single time, man. Thank you for coming on. Have a good weekend, bud. For sure. Have a good one, fellas.